Hey everybody, so uh, you'll notice that I'm not in a normal place. This is where I am. I am in my glorious hotel room. <laughs> Look at that. All right, so the reason why I'm here in this hotel room is because I went to Houston. I'm gonna be spending two days taking my WSET coursework, so that way on August 5th I can take my exam. Uh, I really have no idea what to expect for this course. I'm assuming I'm going to be sitting, I'm assuming there will be wine, and I'm assuming we will be going through the content that's in that workbook. But other than that, I have no other ideas of what to expect. I don't know if we're just going to be doing wine, I don't know if we're actually going to be do doing tastings on spirits and sherries. I, I have really no idea. But while I'm here, and I have a moment, let's do a wine review. All right, so today I'm gonna to be reviewing the Crafters Union Daring and Elegant Red Blend. That's a 2016 from California. Uh, does it have an ABV on here? 13.5% alcohol by volume, and I paid $4 for it at my local grocery store. I don't have uh, any wine glasses, so I'm gonna use this one. Uh, give me a second while I do the pour. All right, so I poured my sample in uh, my nice um, hotel water glass. Um, from a color standpoint, yeah, it's purple. I mean, it's, well, it's hard to see because I have like, hotels have crappy lighting, so it's gonna be really hard to do this one. Uh, I'm gonna say it's, yeah, it's, it's probably has a little about 50-50, so I'm, I'm gonna give this a ruby. I'm gonna give it a ruby color. Um, it probably is darker, but I can't tell in this light, and I have lighting at weird angles, as you can see, there's lights reflecting off the window. So this is gonna be hard. I'm gonna say it's somewhere between purple and ruby. That will be my, that's where I'm stopping. I don't see any artifacts, uh, no cloudiness, so that's nice. All right, so from a nose standpoint, well, uh, it always worries me when the first thing I smell is alcohol. It always worries me. But I'm getting, it smells like black cherry, a hint of raspberry, kind of those red and, and black berries. Like, I might, I might actually be getting blackberry too. It's a red and blackberry fruit, um, but like I said, I'm getting alcohol. I'm getting more alcohol in the nose than I'm hoping for, uh, and on top of that, I don't smell any type of oak treatment or anything like that. Now the taste. It's very jammy. I don't know if I would want a wine this jammy in a can. Normally if, okay, so this is this is my logic for this. Let me get through the tasting first, then I'll tell you my logic. So my my palate is picking up those berry notes, 100%. There's also a bit of like a coffee element, but it's really slight. I mean, the coffee doesn't really show up until the finish too, so it's like just a lot of berries. I'm, I'm, it's, it jumps between raspberry and blackberry and black cherry and all over the place. And then in the finish, you get a little bit of that coffee note. I'm also getting, nah, it's just coffee. All right, so now let me take another sip, put this down. Before I go into the rating, let me tell you some of the pre-logic I have on this. The wine itself isn't bad, it's not. It's jammier than I would like, which to me is concerning for a canned wine, because when I'm having a canned wine, I'm probably on the river, or in a lake, or in a pool, or something like that. It's gonna be hot outside. In Texas today, it was, I think, 102 for our high. I think it's supposed to be 104 tomorrow. Um, but it gets really hot, and I want something refreshing. I think it's difficult to drink something that jammy out of a can. It's just the syrupiness that you get with a little with residual sugars. It's the the body isn't doesn't taste like it's a full-bodied wine. It's, it's I would probably put it more towards medium, but it's so jammy. Like it, the the mouth texture just coats your mouth in residual sugar afterwards. It makes it kind of difficult to enjoy in a glass. Now. I need to do this real fast. I'm gonna drink it straight from the can because that can actually tell you a lot 
in terms of canned wine whenever you're trying to enjoy it. Mm, it's the same. I was, I, I figured that would be the case. Normally, if you're drinking from the can, you're gonna get muted aromas or muted uh, notes on the palate, something like that. In this case, th that doesn't really apply. There's just so much jammy fruit in this um, that it's, it's very, very strong. Though with that being said, it's $4 for the equivalent of two pours or half a bottle. So three small pours, two large pours. One and a half really large pours. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna give you an okay. You're not bad, I'm not gonna pour you down the drain. I will enjoy you tonight while I'm getting the rest of my equipment set up for tomorrow. But you're, you're not tubing material. Like I would not take you on the river. I would not take you to a lake. You're just too jammy, syrupy. I need something, I need something lighter. I need like those Pinot Grigios and those like rosés, those Pinot Noir and Grenache rosés that they have. That's what I need. Having a heavy red or even a medium bodied red in a can and have it be that texture, it's, it's, it's not good for the case, but it's not a bad wine. Now, what I would say is if they could do something that was a more light red, like a lighter red, to a lighter version of a medium, or just find a wine that has more bright acid to it and is less jammy, that would probably be a hell of a lot better than what they put in there. If you could find something that was a medium body wine with high acid and great flavor, then that would probably give it a very good. So, Crafters Union, that's my advice to you. Give me something that is less jammy, more acidic, and is a little bit more in flow with water. Be like water. Be like water. But not water. Be, be good. Anyway, this is Mr. Stewart with Wine on the Dime. If you like today's video, please like, subscribe, and comment. I'm gonna be here for another couple days. I'm gonna be shoot, trying to see if they'll actually let me shoot video of what it's like to be in the classroom at one of these WSET uh, training facilities. So that way you guys can see what to expect when you show up. Uh, I don't know if people are gonna be dressed to the nines. I'm the only guy who's gonna be in there with jeans and a t-shirt or if everybody's gonna be super casual. I don't know if there's gonna be just a ton of glass everywhere and I'm gonna be worried about breaking everything. I don't know if there's gonna be 100 people. I don't know if there's gonna be five. I don't know anything about this. But what I do know is that I am going to do my damnedest to smuggle this camera equipment in if they tell me no. So still be on the lookout to maybe have that there. But also, have you tried Crafters Union Elegant and what is it? Daring and Elegant Red Blend. I'd be interested to know if you have. Leave a comment below and I'll see you guys again soon with another episode from Wine All The Dime. In the meantime, it's, I just had like a four hour drive and I'm exhausted. So I'm gonna drink wine and go to bed. I'll see you later. I told you, I'm just gonna sit here and relax for a few minutes and then like go to bed. I, you really don't wanna stick around for this. However, I do appreciate the fact you did that, so subscribe to my channel. I'd greatly appreciate it if you did subscribe, and also watch that video. YouTube says you'll like it.